G'day, I'm Peter Sesselman, and welcome to blog number one. So today we are talking specifically about amplifiers and what kind of amplifiers work well with um, with stomp boxes and which ones don't work that great with stomp boxes. So because this is a, this is a question that comes up all the time and. There seems to be a lot of confusion about what is a good amp and what is a bad amp when it comes to stomp boxes. Because some people might have a really good guitar amp, but that doesn't mean it's a really good stomp box amp. Um, guitar amps are designed specifically for guitars and quite often don't actually have a lot of those bass frequencies that you need for a stomp box. Sometimes even a bass guitar amp doesn't have those low frequencies. So it, it's really, it's, it's a bit of a case of um, try and see how you go. But I can give you a few basic outlines today anyway. So uh, let's get started. I'm gonna demonstrate with um, one of my basic stomp box models here. Um, this is the Mega Stomp. So it has the puck in it and the wooden holder. That uh, makes it more comfortable to play. So um, as you can see, I have a range of amplifiers set up here today uh, going from a little um, practice amp setup thing here that I, I use in my in my kitchen of all places uh, great little amp that's a Vox uh, YouTube running into an 8 um, 8 ohm speaker so that makes it 25 watts if that was a 4 ohm it'll be 50 watt it has a, a bass shelf so that's a, a really nice warm sounding guitar amp um, underneath that you'll see this is a, a home theater sub uh, that's just something that I normally have hooked up to my uh, my television when, I, when I'm watching movies and you want that or listening to music especially music videos you want a little bit of extra bass you know that's a good unit there I also have here that's a little uh, uh, street rig that I built um, it's got a um, 10 inch sub in it with a tweeter it has a um, battery powered um, car amplifier, automotive amp, and a little four channel Behringer mixer. And a handle and wheel so you control the other around. We've got a Behringer PA power amp here, which is running into the, uh, the old uh, PV PA system. That's a 15 inch Black Widow speaker with a horn, 1970s vintage, good sounding speaker. I have a Delta bass cap with a 15 a mid and a and a horn tweeter, a Fender Princeton 65, an old PV keyboard amp. That's a great little amp too. It's got several inputs and it's got a 15 inch uh, woofer and two tweeters in it. Here's a passive subwoofer, again from a car, so that's a four ohm. And here I have the Mesa Boogie Studio 22 with the extension cab, uh, which is a sealed cab. So that's an open back, that's sealed. So, to start off, I'm going to demonstrate with the Mesa Boogie, which is a great guitar amp, and it sounds absolutely amazing. However, pretty useless with a stomp box, and I'll show you why. So, this is plugged in here now. Now, this is just the, the combo, the 12-inch Mesa Boogie open back. Okay, so the back is open. Uh, that's how it comes. I didn't take the back off. That is a guitar amplifier. So... If you listen to that, it's not horrible, but it's also not really deep, warm and bassy. And that is because it's designed for guitar. Uh, if I turn the gain up, it'll just start to distort because it's intended to be used for that type of playing. If I plug in the extension cabinet, which is a sealed back cabinet, not that much difference. Maybe a little bit more bass if you listen really carefully, but not much difference with a stomp box. With a guitar, this cab makes a huge difference. That really fills out the bottom end. But it doesn't help all that much with a stomp box because again, the frequencies are much lower. Now if I plug in, here I have a, um, a car subwoofer. If I plug that in as the second cabinet, still not really all that much difference. If you get right down here, you can hear some lower frequencies coming out there. But mainly, again, that amp is not designed for stomp boxes. That's a guitar amp. So there's not a lot you can do here. I mean, 
people say things like, oh, what if I have an equalizer and I boost the bass? I'll turn all the bass up on the equalizer. It's not going to help you because um, it's the res restriction of the amp and the speaker and the way the cabinet is designed. You can, you can turn the bass up all the way to 10, uh, which it is here. Um, it's not going to make any difference. It just isn't capable of producing those frequencies. Uh, and that's the thing with guitar amps. I'll show you. I'll turn this off. And I'll plug in the Fender Princeton here. Okay. Nice little lamp comes on. I'll move this microphone over a bit so we, we're focusing more on this one. Okay. You know, it, again, it's not horrible, but it, it's not really a stomp box sound. It's kind of a, a deep knocking sound. And you get a little bit of distortion in there because, again, it's designed for a guitar. And again, quite a nice sounding amp with a guitar, but not that great with a stump box. So, um, moving along, we have a bass amplifier or a, a, a power amplifier with a bass speaker, a bass cabinet. So, um, let me plug this in over here. Now, again, I was saying with, uh, with guitar amplifiers, um, it's not just the size, like this is quite a small amp and the Boogie 2 is quite a small amp. And I have people send me emails saying like, oh, well, I have a, a Marshall with a 412s in it. Surely that'll be great for a stomp box. But, well, not really. It, again, it's not designed for those frequencies. It's designed for guitar. And it's designed to be overdriven and to distort a little bit and things like that. So you're not really going to get a great sound for a stomp box. Um, now, as I said, a bass amp, you, you'll get a reasonable sound, but it, it's still not going to be quite the perfect amp for a stomp box. So let's try this and see how this sounds. Okay, so now we have the, um, the Delta bass cabinet hooked up through the power amp and through, just through the mixer here for, to, to adjust the inputs. Um, everything is at the zero. There's no no boosting or bass or cutting of treble or anything. It's just straight through and into the um, the bass speaker. So now it's starting to get a little bit more exciting because we're getting sounds that are oh, quite nice for a stomp box, but we can still go deeper. So let's try how the keyboard amp works out because keyboards have a very wide frequency range. They go right from the really low notes up to the really high notes. So they're usually quite a good amp, really wide. And I actually use that amp for, um, for bass. Sounds really good. So let's check that out. Um, plug this in down here. Okay, so now, now we plugged into the PV KB100. Again, this is an old, old amp, but um, similar to keyboard amps you would get today, I would think. Let's have a listen to this. So quite a nice sound. Hmm. I'd be more than happy to, to play and using that as a stomp box amp. Now, let's try the PA. So we're now moving on to the PV Black Widow. 1970s 15 inch PA. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so I got the PVs plugged in now. Um, we'll see how they sound with the stomp box. Now, it's okay. Still a bit knocky though. I, I, I want what I want from my, from my stomp box is I want some really nice low. Oh, thundering low bass, you know, that really nice deep thing. So what, what do we do then? You know, do I need like this huge, huge speaker or, or how do we get to those frequencies? Well, a subwoofer will do it and it doesn't have to be a big subwoofer. See here I got the, um, the uh, just a 12 inch car sub and I plugged the other speaker input. So um, this is going through one, one's going through the PV and the other channel is now coming through this one. And I'll, I'll pan across to that one first. Let me move the microphone a bit. So now I'm going to pan across to the sub.
Oh yeah. So now, now, now you're talking. <laughs> now we're getting into some nice dynamic sounds here. And that's a lot smaller than the PV. So it's not actually about so the size. It's about the design of the speaker. So, and this is, this is where it becomes important because a subwoofer is a different design to a woofer. Uh, most subwoofers will have a, a rubber or foam edge around the, um, around the actual cone and they have much longer excursion. So they can, the speaker cone can move, you know, sometimes as much as two inches in and out. Whereas the, P, um, the, the woofer that's in the PA, that has a, like a corrugated cardboard or, or fabric edge, and it's limited to move probably about half an inch back and forth, or like, you know, 12 millimeters. So, and also the, the cabinet is that this one has a, a base shelf in it, so it's got a vent, which is a shelf port, and that again drops those lower frequencies out the bottom. So that, that's when, how you get that nice boof. And that's actually lower than you would get from a kick drum almost. So just because a, a kick drum sounds nice through your, through your PA or through your amplifier, it doesn't mean that a stomp box is the same as a kick drum. They are two different instruments. They can be used for the same purpose, but they are not the same instrument. So now we're, now we're getting some really nice... See, that's, that's a great sound. But it's not very practical though. I mean, you need a big power amp and you need a, if you're playing guitar as well, you would then put the guitar through the, through the PV and maybe just the stomp box through there and you've got the two channels. So it gets a little bit fiddly, um, but that'll give you the sound for sure. So let's, let's move along to the side here where I have, um, so I got that little um, practice amp that I built uh, that runs off 12 volts. Uh, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Now on the side here I have my, my, um, my practice amp and I have a home theater sub. Now, if you're just playing with friends or you're playing at home practicing and, and things like that and you just want a nice stomp box sound while you're practicing or you're recording and you just kind of, you want that really nice low sound, you don't really want to DI it, you want it in the room because the, the room adds a lot of the, of the uh, the, the tones to the to the stomp box, the, the boom of the room and the sound and all that. So it sounds probably better when it's mic when you mic a stomp box through an amp than if you DI it. Uh, mind you, if you DI it, you can always fiddle and diddle and make it sound good. So that's not a problem. So, but the interesting thing is with a the home theater sub, is that the output from the products that I make in particular, and I can't say anything about the others because I don't, I haven't tested all their output levels. But this is actually strong enough and loud enough to be plugged straight in the back of a theater sub. So you don't need a preamp, you don't need anything. And most of those powered subs, they have a little volume control at the back. So if you're just playing at home or you're playing a tiny little gig in a, in a cafe or something like that, you could get away with a small guitar amp, take your sub from home. The kids will have to watch without the sub for the day. Um, and just plug your stomp box directly into the sub using basically an, an um, RCA to RCA. So that's a standard stereo style cable. It's a good quality one. Uh, the cheaper ones aren't shielded, so don't fall for the temptation of buying a cheap cable. And then you can get a um, RCA to jack converter. So that just plugs in here. And then you plug that into your stomp box plug that into the back of your sub and you've got a pretty sweet sound happening, I'll show you. Now just before I demonstrate with the sub, I'm going to show you what it sounds like just through this little practice amp. So, no, no surprises there, obviously this is not going to give you super deep bass, it's a little guitar practice amp, a great little amp. I'm going to strap on an electric just for fun and um, I'm going to plug this with my RCA cable here. So that just plugs in there like that and this goes in the back of the sub. Let's put that 
on the ground there. Let's see, where's the volume? I can, oh, oh yeah, mama. See, that, that's, that's the sound there, you know? That's what you want, that's beautiful. Now, let's see, let's gonna plug in a bit of electric here through the top one. I'm just doing this because I can. It's just that that's a really nice deep rich sound yeah so now I'm going to demonstrate this little uh, street rig type of thing said so it has a, um, a 10 inch sub a built-in tweeter um, a car stereo amplifier at the back a booster amplifier and a little four channel mixer and it plugs into a, a deep cycle 12 volt battery just like a car battery but a deep cycle one and that too generates a pretty nice low thud. So I'm just going to play a little bit. So you can see, that sounds pretty good. So let me put this away. Like that. So, in closing, what have we learned? What have we learned? Well, we have learned that not every amplifier will give you a great sound with a stomp box. Um, we've also learned that to get a good bassy sound out of a stomp box, it doesn't have to be a big amp. It just needs to be designed correctly for a stomp box. Now, the unfortunate thing is that. I haven't really found something off the shelf that'll give you this kind of sound. So it, you're either going to need a big PA uh, or you're gonna need to use a little sub with a guitar amp or something like that, kind of combining a few products together. Now that's not necessarily bad news because these, these subwoofers, the, the car one or the, the home theater one there, you can pick those up for $50 normally, uh, secondhand. Uh, they're not expensive. Uh, they're bulky and heavy and, and things like that, yes. But you want big, booming sound, there's going to have to be a bit of size and weight in it because you, can't, you just can't get it out of a little amp. Having said that, though, this isn't a particularly big amp. It's, it's only a smallish type cabinet, and, and it's not that heavy. You can pick it up like that. Um, and that sounds fairly good at low volumes. You can't use that at a rock concert. But you can't seem to buy something like that off the shelf. So, and I'm not in a situation at the moment where I'm going to make them to sell. It may happen in the future, but it's, it's not available right now. So the only thing I can offer you if you want something like that is I could do a blog on how to make one and they're not difficult to make. So if you're interested in finding out how to make a little amp like that, uh, especially battery power that you can just take with you and play on the street and things like that, then just make a comment in the, um, in the YouTube blog down below in the comments area. And if there's a few people interested, then I'll, uh, I'll do a video on, on how to make them. You could, you could make one in an afternoon quite nicely. And that won't cost you a fortune either. Um, you can get the bits secondhand if you shop around or you can just buy them online or, or uh, through an electronics retailer. And I, I reckon a setup like this, 
probably under under three hundred dollars, maybe I would say four hundred to 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 have a little bit of safety margin. If you had four hundred dollars to spend, you could build one of those apps easy. So that kind of wraps up today's blog. Uh, I hope it was a little bit informative and uh, and that you enjoyed it. Um, I'll catch you next week. I'm doing another blog next week. Check the website for what which blogs are coming up. And um, if you have any ideas or thoughts or things that you want me to mention in my blogs that might help other players, then then send me a comment or send me an email or you, you can send emails to, uh, to to the address written here. And then I will try and include it in, in future blogs. So thanks again for your time. Um, I had fun. I, I hope you had a little bit of fun maybe. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll catch you next week. Cheers.